In this video presentation, we're going to talk about and demonstrate how to set up equipment for gas metal arc or MIG welding. Although each specific application is unique, the general procedures we'll cover apply to most semi-automatic equipment. There are four major components in an average gas metal arc welding system. The power source, the wire feeder, the gun, and the shielding gas supply. Safety must be a prime consideration when working around welding equipment. A safe welder will make use of such equipment as caps, helmets, gloves, protective leathers, and safety glasses, which must be worn at all times in the welding area. Welding fumes may be toxic, and shielding gas can displace the oxygen in an enclosed area. So make sure the welding area is well ventilated. When gas metal arc welding, we'll be dealing with shielding gas cylinders. Make sure they're chained and the protective cap in place whenever the cylinder is not in use. Safety publications available from the American Welding Society and owner's manuals are excellent sources of additional safety information. Be sure you have the owner's manuals handy for reference during setup. Then put them in a safe place for future use. The primary power connection and correct voltage linkage must be performed by a qualified electrician. Make sure the main power switch is turned off when you're working on the equipment. Place the wire feeder over the lifting eye on the power source. First we'll route the wire feeder control cord from the rear of the feeder underneath the welding machine and connect it to the receptacle on the welding power source. Then, connect a welding cable to the positive output terminal for a reverse polarity hookup. Make sure the cable is secure. Connect the other end of the cable to the wire feeder. Make sure all connections are tight. Next, the work lead is connected to the negative output terminal and tightened securely. Install the intermediate and inlet wire guides. They direct the wire into the drive rolls and are sized to the wire diameter. Now, install and secure the upper and lower drive rolls. These drive rolls are reversible, so when one groove becomes worn, you can remove the drive roll and install the opposite side first. Many types of drive rolls are available for specialized use, but these are fairly common V-groove drive rolls for 035 solid mild steel wire. A factory or field installed four drive roll system may be installed when larger diameter wires are used or other difficult wire feeding warrants its use. Now we'll install the gun to the wire feeder. Inspect the O-rings for damage. Insert into the housing. And tighten the knob. The end of the gun cable, which is the gun inlet guide, should be as close to the drive rolls as possible without touching. Plug the gun trigger lead into the wire feeder and the gun is installed. The spool hub should be installed so that wire is threaded straight into the inlet wire guide. For a small spool of wire, the bottom hole should be selected. For a 12-inch spool, the center hole is used. 
and the top hole is used for large spools and the reel type wire holders. The top hole would also be used if you elect to rotate the drive motor. You then feed wire off the top of the spool. A 3 16th inch Allen wrench is used to loosen the clamp which allows rotation of the wire drive assembly. This position works well for straight line feeding if the feeder is suspended or when mounted on top of the power source and welding is done below the level of the wire feeder. Wire drive assembly is shipped from the factory in the horizontal position. Now we'll put a spool of wire on the feeder by removing the retaining ring from the spindle. Slide the spool of wire onto the spindle and align the pin with the hole in the spool. Then replace the retaining ring. Since we need to power up the system to run welding wire to the gun, let's make shielding gas connections first. Remove the cylinder cap and slightly open the valve briefly to blow out any foreign material. Make sure the flow is in a safe direction. Connect the regulator flow meter, being careful not to cross thread the fitting. First finger tighten, then secure with a wrench, making sure it's in a vertical position when tight. On carbon dioxide fittings, an additional fiber washer is used to prevent leaks. Connect one end of the gas hose to the flow meter fitting. The other end of the gas hose is connected to the gas fitting on the back of the wire feeder. Open the valve slowly to prevent the ball from damaging the glass tube. Then open it fully to backseat the valve to prevent leaks. To set shielding gas flow and run wire through to the gun, energize the system by turning on primary power power source and the wire feeder. Make sure the power source contactor switch is in the remote position. Adjust shielding gas flow by pressing the purge button and at the same time set the flow meter for approximately 20 cubic feet per hour. If your wire feeder is not equipped with a purge button, you can release drive roll tension so wire is not fed and pull the gun trigger while adjusting shielding gas flow. To prepare for threading wire through the gun, remove the nozzle and contact tube. Lay the gun cable out straight. Carefully unhook the wire from the spool and cut off the bent section. Keep a good grip on the wire because it will quickly unspool by itself. Feed the wire through the inlet and intermediate guides and into the drive rolls. Close the drive roll pressure arm, press the jog button, and the wire will thread into the gun. Continue to press the jog switch until a few inches of wire feed out of the gun. It's important that the contact tube be matched to the diameter of the wire. Reinstall the contact tube and tighten with the pliers. Then replace the nozzle. Adjust drive roll tension in half turn increments until wire slippage is eliminated. The scale is for reference only. You can check for slippage by feeding wire against a wood or concrete surface. Keep in mind that too much pressure can lead to bird nesting and other wire feed problems. Check wire feeder brake tension by observing the amount of slack in the welding wire. Some slack is normal. If the wire overspools, tighten the nut on the end of the spindle. Keep in mind that too much brake tension will cause the motor to work harder than needed and may lead to wire slippage. A final check of the feed system, including the gun liner, can be accomplished by releasing the pressure arm, straightening the gun, and manually pulling the wire through the gun. 
If pulling wire is difficult, the gun liner may need to be cleaned or replaced. This is also a good time to verify that neither the contact tube nor the spool brake are causing restrictions. The wire feed speed and voltage are then selected for the metal thickness and joint design. The approximate wire feed speed is set. Remote control switches are checked at the power source. The contactor is set for remote and voltage set for panel. Then the approximate voltage is set. And now when the gun trigger is pressed, we should have both open circuit voltage and wire feed. In review then, the setup of a wire feed system started by selecting a power source specifically designed for gas metal arc welding. The wire feeder, the gun, and the shielding gas must all be adaptable to the amperage, voltage, duty cycle, and material type and thickness you're going to weld. During setup, we first connected the wire feeder control cable to the power source. Welding cable was connected to the positive output terminal and the other end connected to the wire feeder. The work lead was connected to the negative terminal. The welding gun was connected to the feeder. Regulator flow meter was connected. And a gas hose run from the flow meter to the gas solenoid on the wire feeder. Wire was fed through to the gun. The wire feeder was adjusted for proper feeding and the voltage was set at the power source. This completes our basic gas metal arc or MIG welding setup procedure. Remember to consult the owner's manuals for specific instructions. Your local Miller distributor is available to answer any questions you may have and supply any parts and consumables you'll need.